Was Jesus truly crucified and killed, or did he survive the cross as on claim? This question has puzzled scholars and divided religions for centuries. Welcome there, Truth Ambassadors, to another enlightening episode here on Truth Ambassadors TV. In today's video, we'll be examining some controversial claim made by Dr. Zaki Naik regarding Jesus' crucifixion and death. Stick around as we analyze perspective from Pastor Chris Ayaki Lome, Dr. Zaki Naik, and Dr. William Craig. Dr. Zaki Naik, an Islamic preacher, has stated that Jesus was never crucified or killed. He based this on a verse in the Quran that disposed Jesus' death on the cross. We will hear him elaborate on this belief shortly and contrast it with the views from Pastor Chris Oyakilome and Dr. William Craig. How can I prove that Jesus was not crucified? Then how can I prove that Jesus wasn't crucified? Peace be upon him. The Quran can I tell you why Jesus was crucified? Have you ever thought about it? What was the reason, the singular reason Jesus was put was to the death? question about Jesus being in the earth for three days and three nights yeah. compared to Jonah being yeah. in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights? Yes. Our focus will be to examine whether Jesus was truly crucified or not based on the Bible and the Quran. Additionally, we will dig deep into the scriptures that Muslim often cite to challenge Christ's crucifixion and trying to underscore some fundamental reason why some Muslims deny Christ's death and crucifixion. Believe me, you won't want to miss the perspectives given by Pastor Chris Ayaki Lome and Dr. Zaki Naik on today's topic. Make sure to watch to the end as the discussion promises to be enlightening and educational. First, let's listen to Pastor Chris explain the reason why Jesus was crucified according to Christian belief. This provides important context on this biblical perspective leading up to the crucifixion. Can I tell you why Jesus was crucified? Have you ever thought about it? What was the reason, the singular reason Jesus was put to death? I wonder if you've ever thought about it. What was the singular reason for which Jesus was killed by men? You'll be surprised why they killed him. Jesus was not crucified because somebody lied about him. Jesus was not crucified because they just hated him, even though they hated him without a cause. Jesus was not crucified because he did something wrong and they misunderstood or they assumed he did something that was so terrible and they found out later on he didn't no no you'll be amazed at the singular reason jesus was crucified you want to know yeah i'm sure many of you are saying yes you want to know singular reason jesus was crucified pastor chris has an intriguing view jesus was not of false accusations or hatred towards him. The real reason is about to be revealed. But before then, let's hear Dr. Zaki Naik's contradictory view that Jesus did not actually die on the cross. The prophecy says, as Jonah was, so shall the son of man be. Jonah was how? How was Jonah in the belly of the whale, belly of the fish? Dead or alive? Alive. When he was thrown overboard, he was alive. In the belly of the whale, he goes around the ocean, dead or alive? Alive. He prays to Almighty God. Dead or alive? Alive. He vomited out on the seashore. Dead or alive? Alive, 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 alive. When I asked the Christians, how was Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, in the sepulchre, in the tomb, dead or alive? They tell me dead. Alive. Alhamdulillah. Is it a Christian? If he's alive, Alhamdulillah, he was not crucified. If he's dead, he hasn't fulfilled the sign. You can refer to my video cassette, Was Jesus Christ, peace be upon, really crucified? It proved that Jesus Christ, peace be upon, was not crucified. As the Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, 157, They didn't kill him, neither did they crucify him. It was only made to appear. Dr. Zaki Naik views a case based on his interpretation of the Quran and scripture. Verse 157 of chapter 4 of the Quran states, And for their saying, we... Jesus son of Mary, the apostle of Allah, though they did not kill him nor did they crucify him, but so it was made to appear to them. Indeed, those who differ concerning him are surely in doubt about him. They do not have any knowledge of that beyond following conjectures, and certainly they did not kill him. However, there are some issues with this approach. Firstly, the Quran was written over 500 years after Jesus walked the earth, so it's much later source compared to the first-hand New Testament accounts which clearly describe Jesus' death. Secondly, Dr. Zaki focuses on one Old Testament verse about Jonah while ignoring many other verses that affirm Jesus' death. We cannot build a robust theology by isolating a single verse. Let's examine some of those New Testament accounts now to gain clarity. 
Number 1, Matthew 27 verse 50. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Number 2, Mark 15 37. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. Number 3, Luke 23 46. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Number 4, John 19 30. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said it is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. And number 5, John chapter 19, 33 to 34. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. These accounts leave no ambiguity. Jesus clearly yielded up his spirit and breathed his last on the cross. However, Dr. Zakinaik makes a fair point. If Jesus predicted he would survive like Jonah, how do we reconcile this? To add clarity on this point, let's now hear the perspective of Dr. William Craig, a Christian theologian and philosopher. Obviously, there were not three days and three nights between Friday and Sunday morning when Jesus rose from the dead. But I don't think that that's of much significance because this is an idiom in Jewish uh, language that is variously expressed. Sometimes it will say Jesus rose after three days. More often it will say Jesus rose on the third day. And in Jewish reckoning, the day begins at sundown at six o'clock. So if Jesus was placed in the tomb on Friday afternoon before six, and then he was in the grave on Saturday, and then rose sometime after 6 p.m. on Saturday or Sunday morning, that is on the third day, according to, to Jewish reckoning. Uh, indeed, if Jesus were interred at 4 o'clock on Friday and raised at 7 o'clock Saturday night, the Jew would say he was raised on the third day. And so all of these expressions are just Jewish idioms that are drawn from the Old Testament expressing um, the time of Jesus' resurrection. And I think it probably is an indirect reference to the time of the women's visit. It was on the third day after the crucifixion that the women came and found the tomb empty. And so naturally the resurrection itself came to be dated on the third day. Dr. William Bradley explains that the Jewish idiom of three days and nights does not require a literal 72 hour period. The time references, those differing slightly, point to Jesus rising on the third day after his crucifixion. So while we respect Dr. Zaki Naik's view, the biblical evidence strongly supports Jesus' physical death by crucifixion. This is central to the Christian gospel. We love to hear your perspective on this controversial topic. Do you agree with Pastor Chris and Dr. Craig? Are you persuaded by Dr. Zaki Naik's claim? Let us know in the comment section. Now we've built a solid scriptural case for Jesus' death and resurrection. But Dr. Zaki also argues that Muslims reject the crucifixion for a specific theological reason. Let's hear Pastor Chris Oyakilome explain the deeper reason why Jesus was crucified, which is the same reason why Muslims deny Christ's death and crucifixion. His insights are truly eye-opening. Matthew reports he's dealing with the Pharisees. Okay, so while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, he asked them, saying, what think ye of Christ? What do you think of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, the son of David. You see, they knew the Christ will be the son of David. So, look at it. He asked them, what do you think of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, the son of David. He said unto them, How then doth David in spirit call him Lord? Because they knew the scriptures. So Jesus is quoting scripture to them now. He says, Why does David then call Christ Lord? Now, let's, I'll read it to you. Watch. He said unto them, How then doth David in spirit call him Lord, saying, He quotes scripture, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. They knew that scripture referred to the Christ. If then David, if David then call him Lord, how is he his son? Jesus is asking them. They said Christ is the son of David. He said, but David, 
called him Lord in spirit according to scripture. So if David called him Lord, how is he his son? He asked them. Guess what? They couldn't answer. Read. And no man was able to answer him a word. Neither does any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. And so he was right. Because David called him Lord. If he's his son, why does he call him Lord? So when Jesus said he was the son of God, they knew the meaning of son of God and they were mad. Because to say son of God, and I want you to understand, I've said it everywhere, and I tell the whole world, because it's so important, most people don't understand, even among Christians, they don't understand the meaning of son of God. Son of God doesn't mean someone that you gave birth to. It's more than that. That's why they accused him, that's why they said he must die. Because son of God means God in flesh. That's the meaning of son of God. That's why they said he must die. They said he made himself the son of God. That means he is telling us that he was the God who appeared to Abraham. He was the God who stood before Moses in the burning fire, the burning bush. So they're saying Jesus is telling us he was the God who split the Red Sea wide open. They said, how can that be? But he was. But he was. Let me show you something. In St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27, let's read from verse number 54. When Jesus was being crucified, so many things happened. While he was on the cross, the Bible says the earth began to quake. There was darkness over the world for three hours, three long hours. The world was dark. When Jesus was on the cross, many things began to happen. Watch, here's what the Bible says. Now, when the centurion, the centurion, the captain of our hundred soldiers, who was in charge of the crucifixion, now when the centurion and, and they that were with him and the other soldiers watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. This was their testimony. The soldiers themselves. When they saw what happened at the crucifixion of Jesus, they said, truly, this was the Son of God. And remember what I told you. Son of God means God in flesh. What an incredible explanation by Pastor Chris. He thoroughly understands why Muslims cannot accept the crucifixion account, even though the Bible is clear on it. As Pastor Chris explained, the title Son of God has deep theological meaning that was considered blasphemous to some. So why the Muslims revere Jesus as a prophet, they cannot accept his crucifixion or divine nature. By the way, I posted a video a few days ago where Dr. Zaki Nair questions Christ's divinity. You may want to check it out after this video. I'll leave the link in the description below. It may interest you to know that for Jews, whether Christ was crucified or not is not a hugely significant issue. He is often seen as just another false messiah. In Islam, however, it is explicitly believed that Jesus was not crucified or as stated in Quran chapter 4 verse 157. Now to tie things together, it is evident from the gospel accounts that Jesus did indeed die on the cross despite opposing views. His resurrection proved he was the son of God with power over death itself. As truth ambassadors, while we respect different perspectives, we are committed to proclaiming the truth as revealed in the scriptures, that Jesus died, was buried, and bodily rose again. This is the pivotal event that makes salvation available to all who believe. What's your biggest takeaway from today's theory discussion? Let me know in the comments below. I always enjoy interacting with you all. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you have not. Until next time, stay open-minded and keep seeking the truth. Thanks and God bless you all. Shalom.